shoes out of my pocketbook and I stomped a while. I got my tamarind and I shook it because we had church. But on Monday morning, when things don't go well, all you know is he's all right. You don't know what the pastor, if you had listened to a pastor who had preached the gospel, who told you on Christ the solid rock I stand, all other ground is sinking sand. If you had been listening to how Jesus, he'll be with me always until the ends of the world. Amen. There are things that we can learn if we listen to the gospel and obey his will. Amen. But, but it happens in the church. Another thing happens in the church is we sung the song this morning, being on the battlefield. Some of us don't know where the battlefield is. How many think the battlefield is a church meeting? Oh, you know, we wait for church meeting because that's when we let our hair down and we put our religion on the fence post and we tell somebody off and then come back and pick our religion back. We think the battlefield is in the church. Battlefield is out there. It happens in the church. It happens in the church. It happens in the church. It even happens in the church where we're inappropriately dressed. I'm not talking about dress, but I'm talking about dressed. Amen. Because we in the church, we don't know how to dress up in the full armor of God. Amen. We don't know how to do these things. It happens in the church. It happens in the church because we don't even know who we're wrestling against. It happens in the church. You know, we wrestle too much against flesh and blood. Amen. I, I heard there was a church, a Bible study in the church where everybody got together and they decided to discuss what color the little mermaid should be. And the scripture plainly lets us know over in Ephesians, we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Don't you know that there are more important things? Amen. We wrestle against principalities. Amen. We wrestle against powers. We wrestle, wrestle against rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. That's who the battle is against. But we want to get somebody because they're racist. We'll do everything to jump on them instead of going, what's causing the root issue? And the root issue is principalities and powers and rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. Sometimes in the church, we act like the enemy. Have you ever seen it? You don't have it in Marshall. It's down in Remington. Amen. You know, you leave church. You just left church and you go into food line. Somebody just been shouting and, you know, shaking around. And then you see him cussing somebody out, you know, acting like the enemy. Amen. Act like the enemy. Well, it's good to be prepared. It's good to be prepared. It's good to be prepared. Give me a few minutes. We're going to talk about preparation. Amen. Because there was a song years ago. I wish I could sing it, but I, you know I can't sing. Brother Rocky, if he's here, he could sing. It was back in 1970s. Amen. But I'm packing up, getting ready to go. If we packing, we ain't ready. Think about it. We need to be packed up. Amen. Not packing up. But packed up, somebody look at me and say, no, you ain't real. How many times have you agreed to go on a vacation with someone? You were going to an event with someone. You're going to spend a couple of nights. And you said, I'll be at your house at 7 o'clock in the morning. We're going to be there. You be packed up and we're getting ready to go. And you got to the destination to their house at 710. And they came to the door. Hold on. I'm still packing. What if the Lord would come? Are you going to be packing when he comes? Or are you going to be packed up and ready to go when he comes? Well, we're going to cover this today. Amen. We're going to talk about Jesus for a while. Amen. And what he has to say about being prepared. Amen. Because if we had to choose anybody 
to listen to, it would be Jesus. Amen. So, so just we're going to go into Matthew 25 just for a while. You don't have to turn there, but in tonight, in your time of meditation, amen, you can go back and you can meditate on Matthew 25. Just give me a few minutes, amen. Everybody knows what meditation is. You've covered that. That's right. You are a city, amen. <laughs> meditation is when you bring up back something what you have learned to get a deeper and a fuller understanding. In the country where I'm from, amen, you think this is country, you ain't seen nothing. You come down to Bealton, I can show you some country, amen. When, when, when we talk about meditation, we use the old na analogy of chewing your cud, amen. You know how cows, see y'all don't know about cows chewing y'all city up around here you know cow brings it back up at nighttime and when you see them laying down at nighttime they chewing their cud bringing back what they have already chewed and digested to be refined and used again so tonight in your time of meditation what we've covered today go back and study and get a deeper understanding but but over in Matthew 25 Jesus gives us the analogy Jesus gives us the story of the ten virgins amen we're talking about preparation today where he gives us this analogy of the ten virgins when we study this analogy when we look at this the, the story follows the marriage customs of the Jews. Amen. It, it follows the marriage customs. And if you know the marriage customs of the Jews, you know that Jesus was right on point. He was right on point. Well, what are these customs and who are these people? Well, these actually, when we talk about the virgins, these were actually what we would call bridesmaids. I'm pretty sure there's somebody out here today that has been a bridesmaid. I see a couple of nods. Amen. We're going to talk about bridesmaids for a few minutes. But these were bridesmaids. And the wedding would begin at the, at the bride's house. Amen. All the, 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 the bridesmaids would go to the bride's house and they would wait for the groom. And once the groom would arrive, that's when the wedding festivities would begin because the groom would come and get his bride and all the bridesmaids and everyone else, they would assemble and the procession would follow the groom as he took the bride back to his house where they would complete the festivities. Amen. Now, if it was a night wedding, which we're going to look at today, if it was a night wedding, torches were needed. That's why we find we read the story about the virgins and we say about trimming the lamps and taking the lamps because it was a night wedding. And if it was a night wedding, you took your lamps. Amen. Now, now, when we look at this, we find out something. We ask the question is, who is the bridegroom? Who's the bridegroom? Well, the bridegroom, if when we look at it, is the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord Jesus Christ is the bridegroom, which leads to the second question is, who are these virgins? Who are these bridesmaids? Well, let me tell you in what we say down in Bealton. We say, you is the virgins. You is the bridesmaids. The virgins here represent the professors of religion. Amen. We profess one thing, don't we? We profess that we know Jesus Christ, that he died for our sins. Amen. He rose again and he's coming back again. We are the professors. Isn't that good news? We the bridesmaids. We the bridesmaids. We the bridesmaids. We are the professors of religion. Not only that, but we are the members of the church. When I say members of the church, I don't, I'm not talking about members because you got your name on the roll somewhere. I'm talking about, as, as, as Reverend Rocky's already told you, I'm talking about the ecclesia. Amen. You already know about the ecclesia. It's the Greek word for church, which means the called out ones. Those who have been called out of darkness into a marvelous light. Amen. That's us. We are the virgins. We are the bridesmaids. 
That's us. And here is the nature of Christianity. And as Christians, you know what? We profess one thing. We profess to be attendants of Christ. Amen. We, 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 we follow him. That's what we say. More, more, more like Jesus. That's what I want to be. That's us. We are attendants of Christ. That's who we are. And what we do is we honor him. Don't we? Come on, somebody. What we do is everything we do and say we honor him, especially when he will be glorified in us. Isn't he glorified in us? And when we do something, when we do the deeds of him, when we have the fruits that follow what he has done, we never say it is me. We say, no, it's not I, but it's the Christ that lives in me. We give all to the glory of God. We do all for his glory because we are the bridesmaids. We give to his glory. And we are expectants also of Christ and his second coming. Every day we think about Christ, we know he's coming back again. Isn't that what he told the disciples? He said, I'm coming back. I'm not going to leave you comfortless. I'm going to send you a comforter. Then I'm coming back again. Amen. That's what he told us. So every time we think about him, we think when I'm going through something and I get weak and weary, when I get tired, you say, I don't have to put up with this for very long because I know my Lord's going to come back and he's going to take me home to be with him. We are encouraged to be ready. I hope for the past three, four minutes, I've encouraged you one thing, to be ready. Amen. I hope that I've encouraged you to be waiting expectantly. But leads me to a question. What if you knew? Now, I know the scripture. I know we know not the day or the hour that he's coming back. But, but what if this morning, when you were laying in your bed, and you rolled over, and there was Jesus sitting there going, howdy. <laughs> and you went, ooh. And Jesus said, fear not. I just want you to know something, brother. I'm coming back today at 1130. I'm coming back to receive all y'all people, all those who are expecting me. I, I'm expecting, I'm going I'm to come back, and I'm going to draw you up to myself. What would you do? Somebody said, Rick, what would you do? I, I guarantee you. Si yep. You get on Facebook. You get da, 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 da. smoke be coming all out of the computer. He coming back 1130. He told me. And, and you know, they're going to think I'm crazy. But I don't care because I seen Jesus. He told me he's coming back. I'm going to let you. Then we run out in the street. Jesus is coming back. Call your best neighbor. And then all of us have relatives. We got somebody in our family that don't know the Lord. You would call him and say, get right with God and do it now. Amen. You would go over to your neighbor who's been the devilish person and say, hey, Hey, knock on the door. He's coming back. He's coming back. And because you were coming here and he knew you, you know, you wanted to be in his church when he come back, you would be calling people, come on to church. You wouldn't have been here at nine, nine o'clock. You've been here at seven o'clock. And when the deacon opened the door, you'd be busting the door down to sit down. Well, if you think about it, that's what we should be doing anyway. We should be telling people about the Lord Jesus Christ and he's coming back. We should be doing it anyway, telling our neighbors, I know you're not right. I know I'm not the best thing in the world, but I got a Savior who's coming back. We should be telling our relatives about the Lord coming back to receive us to himself. But let's talk about these virgins for a while. We're going to talk because there were five foolish virgins. There were five foolish bridesmaids. I asked the question earlier. I said, I know somebody been a bridesmaid in here. And I saw some heads nod. So you ain't getting out of this one. Just about 
every wedding that happens. Y'all listen, folks. Y'all listen to this. Just about every wedding, you know the bride will give some instructions on what we're going to wear and what we're going to do. But there seems to be always one. One old foolish bridesmaid. Have you ever seen her? The bride said, we're going to wear pink. And she come in there wearing purple. <laughs> bride said, we're going to wear a maxi dress. She come in in a mini skirt. There's always one. I see somebody. <laughs> There's always one that just don't want to act right. And here we find the five foolish bridesmaids that took their lamps and only enough oil to make their lamps burn just for the present. Just for the present. Just for the present. Look back at our lives. Amen. Sometimes we only did things for the present. We didn't think about anything in the past. It, 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 you, know, I, I, you know, my knees would have been so much better right now if I had thought about things for the future instead of things for the present. There used to be an old song. You all don't know this because you always, you know. There used to be an old song by the Spinners or the OJs back in 1982 called Living for the Weekend because that's when I party down. Some of us only live for the present. I see the young people looking at me say, he old talking about that old stuff. <laughs> Some people just live for the present. And they were only living for the present, had enough oil just for that time. There was no supply if the bridegroom tarried. If he was a little late back with the bride, they ran out because they were living for the present. Everybody on this side, look over there. Look, look over, look over. I'm glad. Look, look, look. Who's sitting over there? What happened? Somebody not ready because the Lord is tearing. I, I guarantee you, somebody used to sit over there. Listen up now, because we got him in Luray too. Amen? Y'all ain't the only ones. Somebody, because the Lord tarried, because he tarried don't mean he's not coming. And they were here for like two or three years. And Brother Rocky was preaching about the Lord coming back. And then somebody said, well, he ain't came back in all this time. Why should I? You know how we get. We get all, we used to call it brigadier. Amen. Get, think we get cute. He ain't coming back in. The Lord, let me tell you something right now. He's just tearing. He's in tearing. He's giving you enough time to get yourself right. Amen. He's giving you enough time to call on him. Amen. To let him be your savior. He's just giving you enough time. And here they were. There was no supply if the bridegroom tarried. Amen. They had a lamp. They had a lamp of profession in their hands. Amen. That's all they had was the lamp of profession. Amen. They professed. Amen. They professed. They had the lamp of profession. They had a whole lot of mouth. Don't you have them up here in Marshall? People in the church with a whole lot of mouth. You got them. I know there's some here around here. They had the lamp of profession, but their hearts were not stocked with with, with, with full knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. They did not have the knowledge of him. They talk about him, but they, they, they did not know him. When hard times came, amen, they didn't know what to do because they did not have good Christian knowledge of him. They didn't have rooted disposition. They did not have their faith rooted in Christ. Amen. That's why it's empty over there because somebody did not have their heart rooted in Christ. Amen. They, they did not have settled resolutions necessary to carry them through the trials of the present state. When they started going through something, 
They faded on out. Amen. Because they couldn't stand because their hearts were not rooted in Christ. Amen. They didn't have that. They did not have that. They did not have that. They did not have the fortitude that we have. We can stand on. I will bless the Lord at all times because his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Amen. And we know that all times mean what? all times. Amen. So when the times are good, I'm going to bless him. When the times are bad, I'm going to bless him. When I'm feeling sad, I'm going to bless him. When things don't go what I want them to go like, I'm going to bless him. I'm going to keep on blessing him, even though, and I know that if things don't go my way, I know that all things work together for good for those who love the Lord that might not be so sweet right now, might not feel so good right now, but as time goes on, the Lord will come out and prove himself. I'm so glad the brother gave the analogy today about the ticket. Amen. You, some of you are here for Sunday school. So don't you know sometimes, sometimes, and I found out, where's brother, sister Alma? Amen. We, she back there. Amen. You know, sometimes things don't go. People, people will lie on you. Y'all know that? Oh, that's right, Marshall. Oh, they don't do that in Marshall. I found out in life, people will lie. But you know what? Some things you hear in life and then you find out in the scripture just come on together. And my mother used to have an old saying. She said, when people act that way, just go on off. Because it all comes out in the wash. And I found out in scripture, if I just hold my little old piece sometime and just sit back and watch, I can let the Lord fight my battle. And as he's fighting, I said, go on, Lord, you're just too good to be true. Amen. I found that out. But, but then we have the wise versions, the wise bridesmaids. And they're opposite on everything that the foolish bridesmaids were because they let their light shine before men in their good works. Amen. Isn't that good? They let their light shine. And I'm glad that they let their light shine. I did not say little light shine. I said light shine. We in the church, we've got so tucked up and, and wrapped up and let my little light shine. All we do is just do like this, a little light shine. Amen. We need to let our light shine so people can see Christ in us. And if it's a bright light, let it shine. Amen. If it's a spotlight, let it shine. Let your light shine. And these wise virgins, what they were doing is they they were letting their light shine. Well, I've went through all this, and I'm pretty sure my professors in religion, my Bible students, what they have done now, they said, he's talked about all this, but he ain't said another word about David. Here we go. Amen. We're going to talk about David for a while. Here we find David. And we're going to talk about preparation. Here we find David. David went down to the brook and he took five smooth stones. The, the question is, why were the stones smooth? You all, like I said before, I'm from the country. And you all don't have a, we got the Rappahannock River down there. Have you ever skipped stones before? Y'all don't know about skipping stones on the water. Amen. What kind of stone do you get? You got to get a smooth stone if you want it to skip. It got to be, can't be no old jagged stone. And that's why David got the smooth stone for easy projection. When he wanted to get his target, he put it in. He wanted to fly and go exactly where he wanted to do. But then the other question is, why did he choose five stones? Why did he choose five stones? Some people say for the tenants of the church, he got the five smooth stones. I heard one preacher say he got one for the Father, one for the Son, one for the Holy Ghost, and two for good measure. I heard that before, too. But the question is, why did he choose smooth uh, five stones? Well, David 
had done his homework. Amen. David had done his homework. And just like David had done his homework, don't you know we should be doing our homework? Jesus said, watch as well as pray. Amen. A lot of us walking around here praying. Amen. But how many of us are watching? To see the signs of the times and things that are going on to go. And, 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 and after, I, I tell you, you walk, look around for a couple minutes, you can come to the determination, something ain't right. We need to watch. We need to do our homework. I was just listening the other day. That I, I'm glad the, 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 oh, the, 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 the scripture lesson in Sunday school this morning. The woman caught in adultery. Don't you know there is a country rewriting the Bible? And they use the same story of the woman caught in, the, in, in adultery. And they got Jesus as being the one that stoned her. It's true. Look it up. Look it up. Signs of the time. Watch as well as pray. But David had done his homework. Amen. David knew what was out there. David knew that Goliath had three sons. And David knew that Goliath had a brother. And then there was Goliath that makes five stones. Well, I don't know what David said, but David said, you all can bring your old six toes. If you find over these giants, you knew they had six toes. If you look and studied about the giants, they had six fingers on each hand. Amen. And David might have said, you can bring your six toes. You can bring your six fingers. But I got something for you, too. So come on, three sons. Come on, Goliath, brother. I got something for you. And David was prepared but for us for us today give me a couple more minutes we'll be done I know somebody ready to you got something on the stove now ready to go eat for lunch but we got a little bit of food here amen one day we all must be prepared there is an old analogy people use they will say I know you all have heard it when I go before St. Peter, I'm going to tell him this, and I'm going to tell him. Search the scriptures, and you will not find any evidence of going before St. Peter. What you will find is that there are only two judgments. There is the Bema seat judgment. The Bema seat, I know. Pastor Smith didn't told you all about this. Bema seat is where you come for your rewards. Amen. You know, for your rewards. And then you have the great white throne where you will not get that kind of good reward, but you will be shown why you are there. So all we can do is say, be prepared. Because when you get to the, when one, I'm not going to say you, when one gets to the great white throne, let me tell you something. You know, some of us in the church today, we're so used to professing and getting our way and raising our voice and getting loud. As James Brown used to say, talking loud and saying nothing. Yeah, see, I got we're so used to getting our way. But let me tell you, when you get before the great white throne, there will be no putting your hands on your hips and say, listen to my side. It would be none of that. When you get before the great white throne, there won't be any finger in the air and say, excuse me, you got the wrong person. Won't be none of that. When you get before the great white throne, it won't be any clout. I don't care what title you got. You can be president, dictator, whatever. You won't have any clout. When you get before the great white throne, money will not be involved. You can have a billion dollars. I don't care. You can't say, Lord, I got a billion here. I'll give you if you let me off the hook. Money will not be involved. When you get before the great white throne, it won't be my daddy was a pastor. It won't be my mama was a missionary. It won't be my granddaddy was a bishop. Won't be easy to this. We got to be prepared. We got to be prepared. Well, I would be remiss in my duties if I left here today and I didn't tell you about preparation. In fact, you, this afternoon when you see Pastor Rocky, you said that thing he came there and talked about being prepared he didn't tell us what to do and brother rocky you know what brother rocky would do hey john you know how rocky does 
that John, he should have told you this. But we, we come to tell you just for a few minutes. Give me, you, can you give me like two or three more minutes? We're going to share this with you. Being prepared is as easy as A, B, C. Being prepared is as easy as A, B, C. If the first thing we're going to cover, amen, is the A, amen, A, A. Can, can you all say the word all, A-L-L, all. I, I know my diction is bad. I'm from, you know, I'm country, amen, all. The, the, the scripture lets us know over in Romans 3.23, it says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. I know there are some people out there, some people right in Marshall will tell you, I've been good all my life, so I know I'm going to heaven. But the scripture says what God says, all have sinned and come short of glory of God. Amen. All, every single one of us, we have sinned and we have fallen short of God's glory. We didn't get it right. Amen. And you can work and work and work all you want to. You ain't getting it right. Because you have fallen short. So you, by your good works and going out and doing things, you're not going to get it right because all, what? Number one, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. The next one we're going to cover, number two, A, B, uh, is, is B. Can you say the word behold? Behold, behold, behold. Over in John 129, John looks and he says, behold, the Lamb of God who comes to take away the sins of the world. So remember back in all have sinned and fallen short and come short of the glory. Here comes Jesus along, said, I have come to take away the sins of the world. So all the people that have sinned, here I am right now. I'm coming to take away those sins that you did. Amen. I'm coming to take. But then you know what? The third thing we're going to talk about, because there are some people out there who shake their head and say, for the things that I've done, God cannot forgive. Give me, And then there are some in the church saying, for the things that they done, you know, because sometimes, I'm going to tell you a story about it. Sometimes we get uh, spiritual amnesia in the church. You all don't know that, but some, some churches, they get spiritual amnesia, and they forget where they used to be. So therefore, they see someone living in an old nasty world of sin, they say, Ain't no way in the world the Lord can do anything with them. Oh, you got them. Amen. We got them. We got them. But, but for those who think that there's no forgiveness for me for what i done, let me tell you, here comes C. Let me hear you say the word come. Come, come, come. Isaiah 118. Isaiah makes it clear. He says, come and let us reason together, saith the Lord. He said, so your sins be as scarlet which means iniquity and perversity. You can't get any worse than iniquity and perversity, even as though they have become scarlet. He know, you know what? I can make them white as snow. Isn't that good news? Amen. Isn't that good news? It's white as snow means natural, white, and clean. Amen. Let me tell you, I, I, I've been, you might look at me and you say, oh, he black, but I'm not really black. I'm white. And every single one of y'all, if you've been washed by the blood of Jesus, you're the whitest people in here. Let me tell you, that's who we are because we've been washed. Amen. He will make us white as snow. And then he just didn't stop there. He said, even if your sins be like crimson, which is iniquity and perversity, which is something that Clorox couldn't get out. Amen. Even if it be like that, he said, I'll make you as wool. Amen. Which is natural, white and clean. Let me tell you right now, now you are prepared. Amen. All you have to do is confess with your mouth and believe that the Lord Jesus Christ, amen, and believe in him in your heart that he has raised Jesus from the dead and and you shall be saved. You are prepared. As easy as A, B, C. Let us pray. Dear Lord, we come right now in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your mercy. 
We thank you for your grace. We thank you for your Holy Spirit that leads us and guides us. And as we leave here today, Lord, bless us and keep us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. There may be someone today. You do not know the Lord and the pardon of your sin. In, in other words, you just don't know that he can forgive you for what you've done. As we stand on our feet, there may be someone that doesn't know the Lord. You haven't been saved. You want to be saved. If you fall into that category, we can only ask that you might come to Jesus. Is there one? Is there one? Amen. As we remain standing, amen, let us look to the Lord. Dear God, we come right now in the name of Jesus. And as we prepare to leave this place, we're not leaving you out of our hearts because you are in our hearts wherever we go. And Lord, as we prepare to leave, we just pray, dear God, that the light that is shining in us will even shine brighter now that we have been brought to the news of the gospel of Jesus Christ to let our light shine and let you be in the midst of our good works. Lord, we just ask that the Holy Spirit might live and grow within us, dear God, and comfort us and lead us and guide us, and prune us and wash us. Lord, we love you and we praise you. And as we leave this place, we just ask that you might walk with us and lead us and guide us. For if you bless us, we shall be blessed. And if you keep us, we shall be kept. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Our hearts say, amen.